After saving a Roman citizen in battle, a soldier was on his way back to Rome. He was going to show the public that he was not scared of politics. He was going to display that he was no longer just a warrior, but a leader. While sailing back, a group of pirates would stop him in his path, and both of their fates would change forever. The man that was captured was Julius Caesar. Gaius Julius Caesar was born in Rome on July 12, 100 BC. He had ties to the patrician family with direct lineage. This gave him respect with Romans, but not with all the families. At the age of 16, his father died in 85 BC, making him the head of the family. Shortly after, the Rome Civil Wars happened. His uncle Gaius Mirius lost to their family rival, Lucius Cornelius Sulla. When the war was over, everything would be squared away, right? No. Julius lost his family's wealth, any future inheritance, his priesthood, his wife's dowry, and was pressured to get a divorce. Well, this wasn't a terrible thing for him. Honestly, it was a good thing, at least losing the priesthood part. In Rome, the high priest of Jupiter had many strict rules. Thus, it was impossible for him to undertake the government of a providence. He might not mount upon a horseback, nor even touch a horse, nor look upon an army marshal without the pomerium, and hence was selected, elected to the consulship. Great, now he was free, but he had to leave Rome because he could be assassinated. One of the things that he did was join the army and fought in Asia. During the Siege of Mylene, he was awarded the Civic Crown. The Civic Crown was the second highest award that could be given out to the Roman military. It would be comparable to the Medal of Honor in the United States, the Victoria Cross in the Commonwealth countries, or the Legion of Honor in France. It was reserved for Roman citizens who saved a fellow citizen's life by slaying the enemy. A citizen must admit to it, and no one else could be a witness. In 78 BC, Sulla died allowing Julius an opportunity to come back to Rome. He packed up and was ready to see the beautiful city again. The waters were calm, but something outside of the gods' force would change the tides. We have to go back a little bit. The Cilician pirates were a group that controlled the Mediterranean Sea with the fall of the other nations. There was no force to stop them until the Romans came around, but they had luck on their side. Rome focused all of their energy in creating soldiers, not sailors. So the Cilician pirates kept doing their business, robbing ships, raiding ports, and kidnapping people. There was two ways to make money by kidnapping. The first and most common way was slavery. Who was the Cilician pirates' largest buyer? It was, of course, the Romans. Unlike in the Americas, slavery in the ancient world did not go by race or color of a person's skin. It went by how unlucky you were. If you were kidnapped, slave. If you lost a bet, slave. Well, it seems like you just have to be on your toes. Wrong. Families during the period would travel with their husbands or fathers during war. This gave soldiers something worth fighting for. On the other hand, if they lost the battle, their families would become a slave. Scholars estimate about 10% of the Roman Empire's population were enslaved. This would mean for an estimated Roman Empire population of 50 million, between 5 and 10 million were enslaved. The second way was to make money by ransoming kidnapped victims. Victims could be from a variety of different backgrounds such as government officials, royal families, or bankers. Pirates would assess their captives by listening to them and seeing if their personal cargo matched their story. From there, a value would be put onto the captive and the family would have a set period of time to pay off the ransom, or you guessed it, they would be sold into slavery. While en route back to Rome, Julius Caesar sailed on the Aegean Sea. The Aegean Sea is on the west side of modern-day Greece and sailors knew about the dangers of pirates. Each ship tried to take more direct routes because getting sidetracked would often result in capture. Cilician pirates knew of these changes and planned accordingly. They stopped Julius Caesar's ship seeing that he was no normal man. He was a noble taking him to the island of Pharmacusa, also known today as Pharmacusi. When the pirates assessed his value, they came up with a number of 20 talents. Julius Caesar thought he was worth much more than 20 talents of silver. He expressed this to the Cilician pirates and in return, they raised his worth to 50 talents of silver. Julius seemed to enjoy being a captive. In his eyes, he wasn't. Caesar made himself at home among the pirates bossing them around and shushing them when he wanted to sleep. He would participate in the pirate games and exercises, but he would always address them as if he were the commander and they were his subordinates. Julius did this day in and day out, winning games and even reading to the pirates, giving them an inside listen to poems, speeches, and political views. Many pirates thought this was a joke. Julius would even tell them that one day he was going to come back to the island, not bringing gifts, but to crucify them. Caesar sent some of his associates off to gather the silver, which took 38 days to accomplish. 
When Julius Caesar was free, he was a normal citizen again. He held no power, but he had natural leadership qualities, so he gathered men, sailors, and troops to go back to the island. The small fleet set sail to find Pharmacusa. When they arrived, the pirates did not move from their temporary camp. Caesar and his fleet quickly captured nearly all the pirates and took their belongings, including the money that they received from his ransom. Caesar took the captured pirates to the city of Pergamon and had them imprisoned. Following the law, he spoke to the governor of Asia, Marcus Junus Solanus. Julius's proposal was to kill all the pirates and to make an example of them that piracy would not be tolerated. Junius said no and wanted them to become slaves. A noble offer for the pirates because they knew much from this outcome. Fuming, Julius went to the prison. He made them a promise that he was not going to break. Julius ordered the Cilician pirates to be crucified, every single one. Right before they were hoisted up to meet their fate, there was a slight change of heart. He knew that the pirates were just doing what they were doing. They never treated him badly during his captivity, so Julius had their throat slit before they were crucified. Julius Caesar got what he wanted. He would continue to show mercy throughout his lifetime in Rome. Maybe not the mercy some of us would like, but he would be fair if you were fair. But be prepared to meet your fate if you did wrong. All bad precedents begin as justifiable measurements. Thank you for reaching the end of this lesson. Claude's history course teaches history buffs about the importance of world history. For more informational videos like these, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Comment down below which person or event you want to see covered next. We'll see you on another lesson soon on Claude's history course.